Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts, opinions, and feels on oh, The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. The Assassin's Blade is a novella bind up of five novellas that take place before Throne of Glass. And yes, I have the old cover of Throne of Glass. It's going to be a collectible one day. I promise you, it's going to be a collectible. And you guys are all going to be jealous that I have it. I'm gonna buy the new cover soon. <laughs> now you might be wondering if it's necessary to read The Assassin's Blade before Throne of Glass, and I personally do not think it's that important to read before Throne of Glass. There are things that happen in The Assassin's Blade that do show up in Throne of Glass, but I don't think that The Assassin's Blade is that great of an introduction to this series. I personally think Throne of Glass is a very strong introduction to the series, but I am so happy that I read The Assassin's Blade before I continued on with Crown of Midnight because there have already been so many connections to the Assassin's Blade, and I also just felt like I had a better background on Selena and all that she had been through. I overall really enjoyed this novella bind-up. In fact, to me, this didn't even feel like a novella bind-up, it just felt like a full-fledged novel. Each novella has a small time span between each of them, but it reads really fluidly. It doesn't even feel like you're reading a book with a bunch of novellas, it feels like a book with just different sections, and I really appreciated that aspect of this book. So those are all my non-spoilery thoughts that I can share with you about The Assassin's Blade. I thoroughly enjoyed this book, I thought it was a great addition to the series, and I'm really happy that I gave it a chance and that I read it because I had heard mixed things about it, but I personally really enjoyed it, and I found it to be just an amazing installment in this series. So without further ado, I'm going to be jumping into a spoilery section, so if you have not read The Assassin's Blade, go read it, and then come back and join me for this spoilery section. So let us start with The Assassin and the Pirate Lord. I think this novella might have been my favorite, I just felt like you got so much out of this one. It was full of character development and action-packed scenes, which are two things that I really enjoy in a story. I went into this first novella expecting Sam and Selena to be either the best of friends or to be in a relationship and it was really surprising to see that they actually butted heads and that they kind of despised each other. It appears that they're rivals, they're very competitive, and Sam is just always second best and Selena of course is always at the top. I didn't realize how much I missed Selena until I started reading this novella and I just Oh, the snarky attitude, I love it so much, she's got so much sass. So we kind of start off this novella finding out that Selena's mentor Ben has been killed, and Selena probably wouldn't be the assassin she is today if it weren't for Ben, and she is just completely broken over his passing. I really wish we had gone with Selena on her journey to bring back Ben's body. I feel like that could have been a novella in and of itself. And then we could have had the assassin and the pirate lord been the second novella. The first novella could have been like her journey to get Ben's body back. We don't even see her go on the mission to get Ben's body. It's just abruptly like, and then Selena went and got his body and brought it back. I feel like it could have been a really epic and action-packed scene, her going back to get Ben's body, but we missed out. It's really funny to me because at the beginning of my notes I talk about how much I really enjoy Ben's character and how I really see him as a great leader, and it's just so comical to me how that completely changed by the end of this book. I despise Ben now. Obviously I'll get to that later, but I just really don't like him. It's just really interesting to me that at the beginning of this book, I was like, oh yeah, Arabin's a really cool guy. He's a great leader. <laughs> no, he's the worst. We don't really have a great start with Sam. We start off by seeing just Selena completely despising him and just having so much hatred built up for his character. And then Sam himself does something that's just really terrible. He starts an argument with Selena right after she learns the fact that her mentor has passed away. Like, you don't start an argument with somebody who is going through such a rough situation. Like, that is just jerky turkey business right there. You're being a jerk, Sam. Cut it out. So Sam and Selena go on this mission to confront the Pirate Lord, and I'm just expecting for this mission to be a complete mess because Sam and Selena don't like each other, so there's no way that this mission is gonna go over well. Did anybody else find the Pirate Lord to be a little bit creepy? Creepy. Like, the dude was obsessed with the idea of seeing Selena's face, to seeing her unmasked, and it was just a little bit weird, a little bit pervy. I was like, dude, can you chill about seeing Selena? Even though Selena comes off as really heartless, we see so many moments, not only in this book, but throughout the series, where we see Selena's battle with doing what's right. In this novella, we see her refuse to go with Arabin's plan. She wants to free these slaves and make sure that they're not taken advantage of anymore. Though I will say that I don't think Sam and Selena to put enough thought into their plan of saving the slaves. It was a hot mess, 
a very hot mess. Not even a hot mess. Like, it was just bad. It was just real bad. I feel like in this book, we actually see Selena kick butt. I feel like in Throne of Glass, it's one of those things where it's not really shown. It's more of a tell situation. Sarah J Moss is just like, and Selena is a kick butt character. But in this book, it's like, Selena kicked butt. She kicked butt. Ah, ah, ah. And they actually, like, show the action scenes and, like, show her being this kick-butt character. And I really appreciated that about this novella bind-up, because we actually see her doing stuff and see her taking down these people, and it's just epic. So throughout this novella, we see some major development with Sam and Selena's relationship. And I love how this novella ended with an embrace, but not without some sass. We had some major sass there at the end, and it made me laugh so hard. She peeled away from him, stepping out of his arms. If you ever tell anyone about me embracing you, I'll gut you. Just so good. Just so good. Novella 2, The Assassin and the Healer. Oh. So we start off this novella finding out that Arabin has beaten the crap out of Selena. And this is the slippery slope where I instantly begin to just despise Arabin and just hate his guts because he's just such a terrible person. So awful. I know that Selena went against Arabin's wishes and went against his deal, but the fact that he beat her, like, that, no, you don't do that, you don't do that, you are a terrible human being. So now Selena is on a journey to the Mute Master, where she must be trained as her punishment for the betrayal. So we meet this character named Irene, and I'm actually wondering if we're gonna meet Irene again later on in the Throne of Glass series, because I know that Sarah has said that there is a character from the Assassin's Blade that will appear in the Queen of Shadows, the fourth book in the series. So I'm wondering if it's gonna be Irene. I kind of hope it's Irene, because I find Irene to be this really interesting character. So Irene is a healer, and she's getting ready to be attacked by the mercenaries. But our friendly neighborhood Selena shows up and kicks Major Butt! She kicks their butts. She does. She does. And then she teaches Irene self-defense, which I thought was really cool. I really liked seeing kind of Selena be a teacher and guide Irene and to show her all these different moves and ways to defend herself. I'm wondering if Sarah actually took like a self-defense class while riding the Assassin's Blade or something, and that's kind of why it inspired that story. But I found it really cool seeing Selena be able to teach Irene all these awesome moves. And also, I just really like this little friendship that developed between the two of them. Selena provided her with money to help her go and follow her dreams, and I really found that to be just sweet. It was nice seeing another sweet side of Selena. Again, we see that Selena is not a heartless character. She's got a lot of heart, and she cares about people. That's all I gotta say about that novella. Not a lot happened in that novella. Like, a lot happened in the sense that there was a lot of action, but not too much happened other than that. So, let's move on to the next novella. Novella number three, The Assassin and the Desert. So, Selena has made it to the Mute Master, and she she has to spend a month there, and she must win the respect of the Mute Master. That was me being the Mute Master, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> The whole training camp didn't go as I was expecting it to. I thought it was going to be like a lot of brutal action and like training to be this awesome epic warrior, but then it was like, no, you gotta stop from the bottom and get to the top. Kind of just like how life works, you gotta work from the bottom to get to the top. Anyways, I just thought it was really interesting because I just had thought that she would just immediately be trained by the Mute Master and then she would have to go through some sort of trial or a test or something and like prove herself as an assassin, but it didn't work that way at all. She has to be willing to leave all that she she knows and all that she is. Which I guess is a challenge in and of itself. That's a very tough thing to do. In this novella, we kind of see a little bit of Selena's weaknesses. She struggles to keep up with the group, and it was really frustrating, and it was really nice to see that side of her because we always see Selena at the top. Like, she's the best of the best. And then here, at this training camp, she's basically starting from the bottom again and trying to work her way up and trying to keep up with everybody else, and that's just never how it is for Selena. Like, she's just the best, but not at this little camp. No, she's over here, she's down here. Let's talk about Ansel, because I was suspicious of Ansel right off the bat. Like, I knew something was up with her. I basically died laughing when the girls jump over the ravine and they get to the other side and Selena just goes up to Ansel and just straight up punches her in the face. It was so funny. Wasn't that wonderful? Breathing hard, Selena didn't say anything as she punched Ansel so hard in the face that the girl went flying off her horse and tumbled onto the sand. Ansel just clutched her jaw and laughed. So we find out that Ansel was lying about her past, how her father never sent her there, and how there is no Briarcliff. She causes this 
big mess, but Selena still gives her a chance to escape. Like, what the heck, Selena? You're being a little bit too nice. This girl just lied to you and also just caused a lot of people to die, and you're just gonna, like, let her go. Like, obviously she's gonna shoot an arrow. Like, who actually thought she was going to kill Ansel? She wasn't going to. Novella number four, The Assassin and the Underworld. I'm in the underworld, ha 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 ha, so funny. This novella was like my least favorite. I really didn't like this one. It just was kind of boring to me. I mean, it was really sweet. There were some sweet moments that happened, but I didn't really like it that much. It wasn't my favorite and not a lot happened and I didn't take too many notes. I love how Selena was trying to make Sam jealous by like lying about this summer fling she had with the mute master's son, which we all know didn't even happen. I thought it was really sweet that Sam gave Selena that sheet music from the musical that she just completely was engrossed in and just fell in love with. I thought that that was just a little sweet moment between Sam and Selena, and it just was like, ah, ah, Sam and Selena. But at the at the same time, I was really trying to guard myself from like enjoying Sam and Selena's relationship throughout this novella because I know Sam's fate. Like I know it's coming, and I don't want to get like attached to the relationship and to like see them together because. I knew it was coming. I knew how this novella ended because in Throne of Glass we know Sam's fate. Like, we know what's gonna happen. And so, I just was guarding myself from enjoying that relationship. So, every sweet moment I was like, oh that's sweet, but like, I can't. I can't. I didn't really like the mission that Selena went on in this novella either. It's like she put so much work into it and then like, the documents that she got just, like, burned to ashes. I think, like, one of them didn't burn or something. And it was sad learning about Donovan's plan and how he wanted to set a system of safe houses and form an alliance with people who were against slavery. Once again, once again, we see how cruel Arabin can be and how cruel he is and just how terrible he is. And I was so happy to see Selena and Sam kind of break away from him and be like, screw you, get away from us. We're gonna go do our own thing. So I was happy about that, but I'm, I was also nervous. And we have the last novella, novella number five, The Assassin and the Empire. The one where you're just anticipating Sam's death. The whole time, I was just waiting for it to happen, just slowly reading it because I knew it was gonna happen at some point, and uh, it did happen, and Sam died. Sam died. And I, I mean, I, I didn't really get too emotional about it. Like, obviously it's very sad that he died, but I knew it was gonna happen. I do have some theories though, as to if Sam is actually dead. I, I actually don't know if he's dead. Like, I, I'm kind of questioning that. I'm not sure if he's really dead. What if that body that Selena saw wasn't actually Sam's because could you even tell if it was his body or not? Like, that's something that I'm still a little bit confused about. Could she tell that it was Sam's body? But I don't know, that's like my theory. I'm not sure if he's dead or not. A part of me wants to believe that he's still alive, but the other part of me wants to say that he's probably dead. But I don't know, we'll see what happens. Maybe he'll be brought back in Queen of Shadows. I don't know, what do you guys think about that theory? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So those are all my thoughts on the Assassin's Blade. I'm sorry that this video was forever long, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts on the Assassin's Blade. You guys should let me know down below what you thought of this novella bind up, which one was your favorite. Do you think Sam is dead? Or do you think he's still alive and that wasn't his body? Cause I'm not sure, I'm questioning that idea. But we will see. Definitely, we will see what happens. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you soon with a new video. Later. Wah! The Assassin's Blade. Oh, doggy, you gotta freaking move on the bed. Are you gonna go somewhere? Oh, he's peacing out. The Assassin's Blade is a novella, novella bind up. But I am happy that I read The Assassin's Blade before I read Crown of. I really wish. Novella 2. What was that? And form an alliance for people against slavery. Slavery? <laughs> and form an alliance with people against slavery. Slavery? It's not slavery, it's slavery. 